What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here. Absolutely disastrous day at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium yesterday as Tottenham got uh, defeated 2-0 against Chelsea. Um, yeah, this is dark. our player ratings. Let's get straight into it. Uh, first up, we got Paolo Gazaniga. We gave him a three. Maybe even that's generous. But what was he doing? I, I've seen it 500 times. I keep watching it just thinking, like, what could he possibly be thinking when he's coming out for a ball over top from William? Just kind of put it in your arms. I don't understand why he'd gone for a kung fu kick. I just don't get what he's doing. It makes absolutely no sense. I can't. I can't justify. I don't think he would be able to justify what he's even attempting there. It's brainless. It's just stupid. It, I know that it wasn't seems, the it reason. Seems like he got caught in like two minds. But what? What, what, what do you mean? Do? You're a goalkeeper. What other mind do you have than you use your I hands? Know. What do you mean two minds? No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not makes, I'm not trying. Uh, to, I'm not trying to back up for him. But no, I'm just I know. That's, I know. That's what it looked like. I know, but it makes no. It just makes it was, it was actually comical how bizarre that piece of goalkeeping was. Yeah. And was, and in the second half, he was lucky. Tammy Abraham was offside because that was another bit of a clanger yeah. that nearly uh, made it, made it go three 0 and exactly, and it's just as all the Tottenham fans are thinking maybe he can replace Hugo Lloris after he's like been in such great form since Lloris has been injured. And that's, but he has, but you know, mistake at United as well. Now that's two big games he's made a mistake and he's got to cut those out if he wants. Yeah, well, he has you know, thoughts well, we've of being got number one. keeper in Hugo Lloris who also makes big, ga uh, big games. So we need a new so, keeper. Yeah, just say, if right. he wants to be number one, he has to cut out those mistakes. All right, moving on to Serge Aurier. We gave him a three. Disastrous display from him. I thought they targeted him pretty much all game. Every long ball was it to his corner. He had a disastrous night. Uh, every time he was on the ball, everyone was just like had their heads, didn't want, wanted to cover their eyes because they didn't want to see what was coming next. It was just just disastrous all he's, day. He's yeah. really, I mean, look, obviously he's been frustrating ever since he joined us, but like Liverpool away, brainless moment, cost us a goal. Man United away, brainless moment, cost us a pet and cost us a goal. Again, slow to come out for the corner, cost us a goal. He's just in these big games, he's costing us goal after goal after goal, points after points, and it's so annoying. Not even, not even big games, every game, to be honest. Most, <sighs> most majority of games. But at least when he's playing against, you know, Palace or whatever, he's getting assists, he's going forward. But in these big games, man, he's, these brain farts are costing depth. us. He's, he Out needs to go. Yeah, he needs, we need a new right back, and if you can't see that, then I don't know what you can see. Yeah. That was in Sanchez. Next up, we gave him a five. Again, as we've said previously, in possession, just so limited. So you just don't want to pass him the ball. He gives the ball away time after time again. He he can't do a long ball ping like Toby can. Whenever he attempts it, either goes out of play or it goes to a defender. And whenever he tries a short pass into the player's feet, he ends up getting intercepted. The only shining light is, his, I thought his defending was pretty good. I thought he actually engaged some of the Chelsea players. He won a few tackles, but it was mostly making up for his own mistakes. Yeah, exactly. You say his defending was good, but it was all just backing up from his own mistakes. I thought on the ball, like you said, absolutely shocking. Another one where every time he gets the ball, you just want to cover your eyes. You don't want to watch it. But um, so, yeah, I then it gets to the point like how how long do we wait for him to? Because you have this level, we can't be that bad on the ball. We've spoken about Sanchez time and time again, and. I don't know when it's going to end, you know what I mean? Give Voith a run, that's why I say that. Yeah, next yeah you're probably right. But moving on to Toby Alderweireld, we gave him a six. <sighs> Tammy Abraham terrorised him. I'm not even sure why. Yeah, why? I'll, well, you said a five, I said a six. So it's probably my fault we're giving him a six. But I thought in terms, I thought he was better at defending than Sanchez. But even so, it wasn't great. I think Tammy Abraham did skin him time and time again. So... Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought he couldn't get near Tammy, to be honest. I thought uh, for a, uh, a defender with so much experience as Toby, he should be able to handle someone like Tammy Abraham, who's... Now, I know he's young and he's fresh, he's having a good season, but he's been a bit, a bit off the boil recently and he should have been able to get into him. But Tammy, I thought, had the better of him most, most of the game. And you're talking about someone who's just been giving 150 grand a week for three years. Three years? Yeah. And, and he's 30, so like... Is he going to get any better? We need, he need, we need better performance from Toby Adler. He needs to be that, that presence at the back. And his long balls didn't work. Yeah, we, we tried them time off. That's the only weapon we had pretty much the whole game. They just That's didn't the only work. weapon we've had for a while now, since Mourinho's come anyway. Jan Vertonghen, we gave him a five. I thought he really struggled um, on that left-hand side against Mason Mount. I felt like um, Chelsea going to a 3-4-3 three, uh, really got the better of us. They they overloaded the wing, the wing, the full back areas, and Vertonghen and Aurier just couldn't handle it. And with Lucas and Son not really tracking back that well, 
Um, there was just overloads. It was so easy for Chelsea to progress in the fullback areas. And Mason Mount was just getting past Jan Vertonghen. He was a lot sharper than him. Jan Vertonghen struggled to keep up with him. And um, it's worrying going forward. I mean, look, he's been all right, I think, at left back. But I think in these, when he comes up against the better opposition, we need, a, we need something more. Yeah, and you saw it against Wolves, how he got skinned by a pacey winger. You know, if you put anyone with pace up against Jan Vertonghen, they're always going to come out on top. And it's just, it's hard to see with Jan because he, I think he is slowly declining as a footballer. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, he's 32, so he's yeah, expected, exactly. but anyway. Moving on to Eric Dyer, we gave him a three. I just don't want to see this guy in a starting lineup again. I really don't. We've said it time and time again. When is Jose going to wake up and see that Dyer is not the answer to our centre midfield problems? Like, he loses the ball every time he gets it. He can't turn around. He literally can't turn on the ball. Like, he fa he's facing our goal, looking at Toby Alderweireld. Even if he's got time, he just won't turn. Exactly. He doesn't even look to see if he has time. He just won't turn. And he will either pass it backwards or pass it sideways. There's no chance that Dyer were ever going to get a forward pass. And if he does somehow miraculously try a forward pass, it never goes to a Tottenham player, ever. It's just frustrating. And he's not, look, at this level, he was good. As I said, a couple of seasons ago, he was a good stopgap in that position where we had literally no one before we bought in Wanyama. And even Wanyama showed what a good defensive midfielder really is compared to what Dyer was in that, in that first season he played. I, I agree with you. He's not the answer in, the, in this position. And... Um, and it's no surprise that we kept bypassing the midfield whenever we got the ball because he just couldn't play the pass into midfield. There was nothing happening there. There was no creativity. There was no ball player. And he, it's, it's frustrating to see die in, in, in that position. Mm. Moving on to Musoka, we gave him a six. The only one really who got the ball and tr tried to make some forward runs, tried to make some progressive play. Um, even tried then, being tried. Words, eh? Yeah, he got he made he nearly set up a goal for uh, Harry Kane, but he Kane unfortunately blazed over. That was probably our best moment of the game in the first half. Other than that, that was towards the end of the first yeah, half, right? Yeah, yeah. I think him and just him and Dyer. There's just absolutely no creativity, no passing range at all in that midfield too. These and, two cannot play alongside each other. And when you're up against, does not work. And when you're up against people like Kante and Kovacic, two really um, top class. Um, central midfielders in, on, a, on a European level, it's no surprise that they couldn't compete. Uh, 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 you know, you need players who are able to get the ball and pass it around them and beat there. If they're going to press you high, you're going to have to be able to beat that press. And Dai and Tosoko are never going to be able to do that, And as a, especially as a partnership. And it showed, because when Undombele came on for 15 minutes, it was a breath of fresh air, a guy who actually turned on the ball, take people on, pass forward. It was like, what were we, what were we doing having this guy on the bench when we have Tosoko and Dai waddling around in the middle, not, do, not knowing what the hell they're doing? Yeah. It's just frustrating. Hopefully, Jose can see that and put Undombele from the start. But he also has his own fitness issues, but ho hopefully he can sort it out. Exactly. Maybe we need to sign Musa then ballet back and they can play 45 minutes <laughs> yeah that'd be great that'd be good uh, moving on to Lucas Moura we gave him a four I thought he offered very little uh, going forward didn't kind of track back to help out uh, Jan Vertonghen or uh, Serge Aurier um, and yeah I really have nothing more to say on Lucas Moura because he had a good game against Wolves I thought he was okay and you know this happens every time with Lucas Moura one okay game one poor game one great game one poor game okay game you know what I mean yeah, inconsistent. he's so inconsistent inconsistent again from Lucas here yeah. and uh, he obviously he's got a great goal last week against Wolves but he was completely anonymous this week mm. and uh, look I think he's not I, I the attacking players we're all pretty much anonymous to be honest but we had nothing we had no control of the ball Every, the only thing we had was a long ball over the top and that's not really Lucas's game he likes the ball to feet so he can dribble and uh, he was just not in the game Yeah. next up Hyun Min Son we gave him a two brainless moment from him what was he thinking look I, I we've rescinded we've, we've appealed the red car which I don't know why we have because I think it's a clear as day uh, one of those things I know that, look there's not much um, force in the in the action. It's not like he's actually going to hurt him or anything. But when you do that, you run the risk of getting sent off. And the referee was, I think, once they saw it on the camera, they're always going to send him off in that kind of situation. I think, yeah. And he, I think it was a very frustrating day for him. He was always trying to run in behind, but getting absolutely no joy. He was clearly getting frustrated. Rudiger, I think, did foul him, and I think that 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 bore out his frustration that moment. And that's three red cards this year for humans. So one of them got rescinded, but that but is that something to be concerned about? You know, three red cards. Um, that's like league catamol levels in a year. Well, that's the stat, isn't it? They say 
he was the first player since Lee Katamar to get three red cards in the game, even though one was rescinded. So maybe it's a bit harsh to say that one. But, but still, for a player like Son, who's widely regarded as one of the nicest guys in football, yeah, it's crazy. And it's for violent conduct, conduct as well, most of these red cards. Each time. Um, look, it wasn't the most aggressive of actions, but it's just stupid. It's brainless. And he'll look back and think it was just a moment he lost his head. Yeah. But, you know, as a professional footballer in a derby like this, you just can't lose your head yeah. uh, like that. Um, and apart from his his what happened there with the red card, I think he was didn't offer anything going forward pretty much the whole game. He was the only, but he was the only one trying to run in behind and we yeah, just couldn't find tried, him. He tried, but yeah, but he, he had too many players on him all the time. He couldn't find that space in behind and they couldn't find the ball over the top to get to him. So we need to... We which, need is to a, which is a cause of having Dines and Sophie in the middle, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, which moves us on to Delhi Ali, who gave him a four. I think it's it's kind of three quiet games in a row now for Delhi. Um, he was trying his tricks and his flicks, but obviously nothing was coming off for him. Uh, he didn't have much of the ball. He didn't have much time on the ball, and um, he was getting crowded out and he was getting visibly the ball. frustrated yeah, as well. Visibly frustrated, and he got in that fight with Kovacic. Uh, which they both got booked for. Did you make anything out of that? Should it have been more than that? I haven't even seen it back, to yeah. be honest. So I don't, I'm not sure. But yeah, Delhi had a frustrating day for him. And again, no supply in the midfield. He dro he dropped very, very deep. You could see that because yeah. clearly there was nothing happening between Dian and Sissoko in terms of in possession. But so he, he needed to, you know what I mean? Because we need someone in the middle to pass. Yeah, but it. even we him, like, like a donut. even him, like D Delhi's a look, very good at player in the attacking third. But when you get him in the middle third, he's not he's not the most creative of passes in inside there in terms of progressive passes. He's very good in around the penalty area and he's good doing little through balls. He's and good at the flashes, you know, mm. when you don't have to think about it too much. It's like but when it's a brilliant. But when you're trying to control a game, that's yeah. Delhi's not his forte. Yeah. Uh, and last but not least is Harry Kane also gave him a four um, our two best moments he was involved in he set up Son at the back post in the, in the first half with a lovely pass back post which Son blazed over and um, he had a chance which Sissoko set him up which he blazed over other than that completely those anonymous those were only two chances of the game really, yeah in that it? first half other than that he was completely anonymous had nothing of the ball um, he had nothing of the game he, he, you know we were lumping up to him he, he struggled in the air I think this, I think Zuma, Tamori and Rudiger won uh, I think over 70% of their headers so clearly he was getting no joy early and when lo the long ball was our only option that was never going to be that was never going to work out yeah I think it was a very frustrating day for Harry Kane he was dropping deep a lot to try see some of the ball wasn't happening for him and just a very very quiet day and I think the Chelsea defence marshalled him well yeah. and um, not much else to say on the matter Jose Mourinho well, he brought on Ericsson at half time which I thought was a good move at least he tried to rectify the situation didn't quite it was a bit of an improvement it didn't quite work out still and then obviously once the red card came that was game over but it was already well, at least we had chances in that first half in that second half we had nothing uh, yeah we but we got so after, after the hour the song got sent off yeah I know but we played better with Tetanum yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, well, once Dombele came on, we were a bit better, you're right. Um, look, even uh, he put on Ericsson for Dyer, but Ericsson Sissoko in the centre, even that, I wasn't, I'm never going to trust that against Kante and Kovacic. Um, yeah, we still didn't create much. We had, I think we had a bit more of control of the game until Swan got sent off, but we weren't creating any chances. I think Jose got it badly wrong in midfield. The balance was wrong. Dying to Soko shouldn't be playing in these at least anyway in the games in of this caliber. I don't think they have the qualities to compete in the centre mid, and you need players who are able to get their foot on the ball like Dombele was able to. And he's good look. He's still he's only been here um, a few a, a month now, two months maybe. Is it two months? Who? Mourinho. Mm. Um, so Not he's still months, about a month and a half. A month yeah. and a half. So he's still learning about his squad. He's still learning about the qualities of the squad. Hopefully he picks up sooner rather than later. But I think he got it wrong in the, in this game. Yeah, and you know everyone talks about new manager bounce for Spurs with Jose Mourinho and stuff like that. But I felt I, I don't think we have had a new manager bounce. I really don't. Well, well, from results we have. I mean, results. Yeah, we've beaten teams where where you say that we should be beating them no matter what manager we have, you know, in terms of a very poor West, Ham, West Ham side at West Ham away, 3-2, you know, they nearly got back themselves back into that game. Uh, Wolves, we were poor. United, we were poor. Bayern Munich, we were poor. 
Wolves, albeit we, we got we won the game we got back into it but in the other games it, they should be give me games yeah you know, but we were but, that, but, that, but that's the thing before Mourinho came we weren't even winning those you know we yeah, were drawing at home to Watford yeah, in, and in, all in the very in the very close of it but when you look at the season on the whole you know we Palace came to the Tottenham Hotspur game and we won 4-0 against yes, Palace yes that was literally that was very much in form. no I disagree with you I think even like we drew at Watford at home you know yeah. we couldn't we, we, we won we couldn't even get wins against the very winnable teams yeah, but I'm, uh, we lost 3-0 to I agree, Brighton I agree results results wise have, have got better and no I think, before, I think I think performance wise I don't think we have got better I disagree I think we have I think we have got a bit better I don't think it's been markedly like amazing improvements but I do think we've improved since since Jose's come in but I, I agree with you it's not like it's not like you, you could probably argue if Pochettino said he could have won those games I'm, I, I agree with I'm that trying to say. I agree That's with that I agree with that but but the, the fact of the matter is he wasn't winning the games beforehand and now we are winning those games uh, we are scoring a lot more goals than we were we're creating more chances yeah. but yeah, I agree with you against you the Big the the real challenges Wolves away, uh, United away, Chelsea at home. Those three games we've been found wanting in all three of them, pretty much. Except but for even some of the games that we've won, we could have not won those games. I know, but well, I, I just agree with that. Three nil up, two nil. Two yeah, but that's the back. thing. That's the thing. We were three nil up then. We nearly let it slip, but it's not. But we were three nil up, as in we were battering mm. them. We should have. We shouldn't have got to that stage. We were three two yeah. or whatever. So they do, I think that does show an improvement. But I agree. With, I agree with you that look, Jose's got a lot of work to do. A lot. And I and I, whether he'll get the funds in January he said he's not going to be signing anyone in January I don't, I don't know how you think this team doesn't need the signings maybe he's just saying that to the media I hope so but but we, we, we need players desperately Aurier we need centre mid desperately through, we yeah. need a right back desperately we probably need a left back desperately we need a centre back desperately it's like needs a lot the defence needs a lot of surgery mm. and uh, yesterday was worrying how incompetent the team were functioning the most worrying thing for me was how Jose made a whole point of how this is the first week he's yeah. going to have with the team. This is the first yeah. week he's going to real try and implement yeah. his tactics, and that's what came out of it. And that was that was because that looked like Man United of last season, honestly. What we yeah, saw yesterday, hundred percent. And it looked like our performance up at Old Trafford this season as well. So it wasn't, so hopefully, it wasn't too dissimilar. So hopefully he can get uh, he can learn from that. But look, obviously we're going to give him time. He's still only been in the job uh, less than two months. So and it's not the results have been bad. It's just these performances haven't been a, ma a massive improvement all right well we move on to brighton at home on boxing day uh, yeah. 12 30 kickoff so let's hope we can bounce back at that game um like subscribe and comment tell us below what you thought of the player ratings merry christmas and happy hanukkah to everyone out there and as always come, come on you spurs, spurs.